Oh, didn't see you there, guys. I wasn't I wasn't doing anything strange with the flame. Nothing at all. Well, welcome everyone to my second Frightening Friday flick. I did one before, and that was before my Halloween special in October. So we're back to the regular routine where I just watch one horror flick a week, and I come out with a review on Friday or Saturday. Usually I watch the film on Friday, and the review comes out on Saturday. But tonight's Frightening Friday flick is has a little bit of a silly title. It's Invisible Ghost. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think of the word ghost, I already think it's invisible. I don't feel like you need to clarify it's in the invisible ghost. Now, some people do believe you can see a ghost. You can see, I don't know, mist or just something. But that's tonight's title, is Invisible Ghost, and it has nothing to do with your typical ghost that you think of where, you know, boo, that type of ghost. But, so I said it came out in 1941. It's only an hour long. I recommend you watch it because it's pretty good. It stars Bella Lugosi and Polly Ann Young, which would be her final film. She did quite a bit of films in the 1930s, and at first glance, I thought she was a very beautiful woman. And she really had that modern-day 1940s brunette look to her. I actually thought she looked quite a bit like Joan Crawford. But she was pretty good. I liked her quite a bit. And for Bella Lugosi, he doesn't really need an introduction, especially in horror films. But this would be his first of nine films that he would make with monogram pictures. And I'm sure I will get to at least some of the other eight eventually. But because I liked Invisible Ghost, so I'm inspired to see more of them. Now, the plot of the story is Bella Lugosi is this charming, very kind man living in a grand house. And he's living with his daughter. And for some reason, workers and just people who are staying in the this house of his end up dying. And what it is is Bella Lugosi gets in these strange trances every time he sees a, a woman outside his house. Now, this woman happens to be his wife that ran out, ran out on him with another man. And she had been in a car accident, so she is a little bit mental, she a little bit crazy, she doesn't know who she is really, she doesn't know what's going on. She just keeps (laughs) walking around the outside of the house, and Bella Lugosi, by some supernatural force, can always sense when she's out there, and when he sees her, he becomes another person. He gets this strong desire and urge to kill. He's plagued by homicidal urges whenever he sees her. And I want to talk about the first murder scene of the film. I'm not giving away too much because it all happens in, at the start of the movie. But So the first murder, he walks into one of the maid's room. She's in bed. She's getting ready to go to sleep. And... It's super creepy because the way it's shot is from her perspective and he takes off his robe and his night robe and I like to call it the the night robe of death because he takes it off every time he's getting ready to strangle or kill someone and the angle is it gets really close up to his face as he's coming up to her to murder her and watching it you think wow is is he gonna rape her of course not but he's just doing it to kill her but it's very disturbing in my opinion it reminded me a little bit of dr jekyll and mr hyde with um how disturbing some of those scenes were some of those murder scenes were in that movie but um there is one jump scare in the film i'm not gonna say when or what it was because 
it wouldn't be a jump scare if I told you. But I will say it happens a little closer to the end of the film. I liked that a lot. And most of the film, I'd say 98% of the movie takes place inside this house. Uh, The director really did a great job with um, just using the shadows of the house to give it that creepy vibe. And I want to talk about one scene in particular. So the butler of the house walks into the kitchen or some room and he stops in his tracks. He looks down and what the camera does, it, it starts with his face and slowly just starts moving down. He doesn't, he doesn't kneel down or anything. He's still standing looking down and it starts moving down slower and slower and then it moves under this kitchen table or counter and then you see a dead body. I thought the effect of this scene was was awesome. Um, for an hour long film I thought the director knew what he was doing and creating a, a good little movie. Um, so as I said it's definitely worth, worth watching. Um, it's only an hour long. It's perfect for a frightening Friday flick and be sure to give a like comment below recommend me to watch a classic horror film because honestly I don't know too many good ones so I pretty much just look up random stuff and think oh that looks interesting that that might be good so give me a little recommendation don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're liking my review so far and uh sleep sleep well tonight guys i don't know there <laughs> there might be an invisible ghost stalking you but until next time